What is up everybody and welcome to another one of those obligatory aura expert videos. So today we're doing a true unbiased review of Grand Cross in the state of it right now for me personally, okay? This is going to be my own personal opinion, so if you have other opinions be sure to leave them down in the comments. On top of that, there will be timestamps to all of these um, like categories that I'm going to be talking about today because this is going to be a lengthy video probably closer to the hour than the 30 minutes so there's definitely going to be timestamps for those specific things that I talk about but I will be talking about every single thing you can do in the game and if it's actually like enjoyable to me and all that good stuff because right now I the game is like it's okay nothing crazy but it's still I just want to talk about the things I would like it, the game to work on. That's pretty much what this is, this is going to go down to. So, be sure to share the video, like, comment, subscribe, because this is... I'm going to be giving y'all my unbiased takes. I'm not, like, going to sugarcoat nothing. I'm just going to tell y'all how I feel about each and every piece of content in the game through this spreadsheet that I made. We're going to be going through a lot of different contents and then a lot of different, like, aspects of the game. And then the, the categories that I chose is like gameplay loop. So like playing that sort of that specific content, how fun it is on a scale of one to 10. Is it worth playing it? Is like how much your account needs to be invested into to actually play these game modes. The replayability of said game modes. And like if that's a decent like if, if it's actually like enjoyable to replay that certain game mode. The depth of the content. So like is it actually like methodical, well thought out and that kind of stuff. And then last but not least, that's my X Factor, the fun category. That's what we're going to do, because genuinely speaking, I just, I need to get this down somewhere, and I want to put it in a video format, so I can come back to this at a later date, and see if my thoughts changed at any point in time. And I'm going to do this before the collab, the slime collab comes out for Global, but in reality, I've already seen what I need to see for the characters and the update, so that is going in, into consideration as well, as a Global player. So, yeah, again, timestamp's going to be in the video, so click on those certain sections if you want, and we're just going to get into it. So, let's get started. So, starting off with our first category, limited time events. Limited time events are, you know, whenever your new banner comes out and they give you all of this stuff. These are the limited time events for the actual updates that we get like for right now we got the esterosa events and yeah we're doing all this stuff for like halloween personal and all that good stuff so i'm, I'm gonna try to keep it short and simple because genuinely most of these it, it is what it is so when it comes to gameplay of the limited time events i'm gonna be honest i don't care about half of this stuff i never do so in terms of like a scale of one to ten i gotta give it like a four because genuinely speaking I just don't care that much for this limited time shit. I haven't done the Percival stuff. I haven't I done the World Quest because I needed to in order to get the special missions done. But the World Quest is a three-year-old reused asset. So, like, that World Quest, we've done it twice, if not three times. So it's not nothing new. Bingo events have been here since the dawn of time. The same two event bosses since they came out. And then final boss, the end king. That was cool, I guess, but it's whatever. It is what it is. I did it like one time, got top 10% and I stopped. And like literally, there's nothing here. Nothing here of value to me. So in terms of gameplay, that's an easy four. Now, is it worth it? Yeah, of course it's worth it. I would say it's a 10 out of 10 for like if it's worth it because you're getting a, a free multi for the newest character, you're getting a lot of free materials, and genuinely speaking, it's pretty good to do these on the daily basis because there's a lot of good materials back there. And when it comes to like investing though, like how much does your account need to be invested into to play this game mode? You don't need it to invest that at all. You don't need anything. You can do these relatively easily with like the lowest setup possible. So in terms of investment, I'll give it a 10 because you don't need to invest at all. Your account does not need to have anything crazy to actually complete anything here. Maybe final boss, but that's just, yeah, whatever. So uh, that doesn't count because final boss doesn't come around all the time. I'm just talking about like the staple shit for limited time events as a whole. Now, replayability of this, again, 
I don't like doing it. So, in terms of me replaying it, like, for instance, the event boss battle, I've only done it ten times, and it's been around for um, two weeks, and you do it five times a day. So, out of 14 days, I've only done it twice. So, by that proxy, and that's, like, consistent with me when it comes to these type of things, I've got to get it, like, a three. Like, straight up. It's not that enjoyable to me. It, it just isn't. And then the depth of the limited time events, it's a zero, period. Because it's the same reused shit. Maybe it's not a zero, because Percival is new, but they already brung this Percival event back. It was in the last um, limited time event when Percival dropped. So genuinely speaking, when it comes to depth of limited time events, maybe also a three, like nothing crazy. And then is it fun? No, it was never fun. It's never been fun. I only do these for rewards. It's not fun. It, it, you just go in, you do your brain tight, like your brain take runs, and you get out. So, yeah, genuinely speaking, it's not fun. It never was. So, now that was the layout of it. I have a 4, 10, 10, 3, 3, 0 for my scorings, and it all adds up to a D for the game mode of limited time events. And now that's going to be the format that we're going to do for all of the content in the game. And then at the very end, obviously, at the top, you see the class average right here. So that's going to pretty much give me my opinion of what this game is in a, like a grading system. So yeah, that's going to be how we do it. So now that we're done with that, the daily routine. What that means for me is like what you want to do every day you log into Grand Cross, which is your daily tasks and your weekly tasks. And then, you know, actually doing your daily bosses, your daily special dungeon keys and all that stuff. So this is like incorporating everything you can do in a day with the cap okay in terms of gameplay the daily routine is not horrible it's actually pretty enjoyable sometimes but it's not perfect right because again it is what it is so like in terms of gameplay of the daily routine i can give that like a solid seven because genuinely speaking it's not horrible and is it worth for your account of course it's worth it's extremely worth it actually because if you do your daily routine if you do your daily routine every day you can get 30 plus gems a week and you can summon on those banners that you really want to summon on and you can also keep up with your box because genuinely speaking you want to have your box built up so you can play all the content in the game that has to offer and all that good stuff and as well as that you also get your account cc buff so yeah in terms of worth it it's 100 worth doing and it's actually not horrible doing the daily routine now how much okay i don't know why that happened but how much of an account investment do you need to do the daily routine none at all you at most you just need a like one or two decent teams built and then you can just run through your dailies run through your weeklies i mean you do need the teams for those certain game modes but we'll get into that later and when we actually talk about those game modes but in terms of like your daily routine doing dailies and weeklies let's keep it at that bare minimum of dailies and weeklies it's not that expensive i'd say you need like like maybe five teams at most like at least maybe i don't know but I'll give it like an eight for investment of your like how much your account needs to get up there. Because obviously, if you need no investment, you're going to get a 10. And the more investment you need, the lower the number gets, obviously. Because you want to have you want to have it be fair for everybody, new players included. Okay. Now, the replayability of a daily routine, it's a 10, obviously, because it's a daily routine. You want to be able to do it. And for me personally, I do it every day or every day I remember to log in and i just go with it so i can give it a 10 for replayability that's pretty simple and then for depth i think i'd say uh it's not that deep it's because the dailies don't change it's the same daily every day and it's the same weeklies every week so in depth it's not that crazy so i can't go over five so i'd probably give it like uh eh, i'll give it like a five i think i'd give it a five like straight up because the depth of it is not the craziest thing of all time. Now, let's see. When it comes to how fun the daily routine is, I'd say it's pretty fun. It's a Because pr I like PvE more than PvP. So I'd say the daily routine for me is pretty fun. But it's still, like, no skill, like, at all. It's just you brain rot going through all your tasks that you need to do for the day. And then at that point, you do whatever you want. So I'd say for fun, i give it, like, a 7. I think a 7 is fair. Oh, shit. There we go. I think a 7 is relatively fair for the daily routine, and I think I can live with that. Now, we're getting into something a little bit more different. Hero Arena. Hero Arena, I've done all my shit, so, you know, I can't really log in and play it. But, 
Hero Arena is one of those game modes that I do enjoy. So, in terms of gameplay, I'm gonna probably give it like a a 10 because genuinely speaking, it's not a bad game mode at all. It's pretty good and it's really enjoyable. And you can actually like play around with different teams if you're really bold enough. But like overall, it's not a bad game mode. The Hero Arena is pretty good. So, and is it worth for account? 100%. It is. 100% worth it for the account because you get LR coins and LR coins is like get your LR characters and LR characters are pretty damn good So that's out of the way now how much account investment you need to do here arena a lot So when it comes to the lowest difficulty you need to have a 200,000 CC team and not only that you need to have three of them at least so three different teams of 200,000 CC it's not hard by any means but like for instance my free to play account is at like 8 or 9 mil and I'm barely scratching like 250 with all of my main teams on my free to play account because I just play a weird that's just my own gripe that has nothing to do with how most players in that ballpark play so genuinely it does require a bit of investment to do it on the low end like a little bit and then on the highest end you need like all the investment in the world you need to have 15 million box cc if you want to do the highest difficulty going first type of deal so in terms of investment i'm gonna have to give it like a seven because it is pretty pretty deep on the high ends of it and then on the low ends of it it's not horrible so i'd give it a seven for sure and the replayability it's a 10 because honestly you want to do it there's no reason not to do it and if you miss out on doing one of the weeks you just kind of mess up your account as a whole so I'm gonna give it a 10 on replayability for sure. And then depth of it all, uh, it's not that deep. It's usually just the top meta teams of Guild Wars that they add in Hero Arena. And then it's in a 4v4 scenario because that's what Guild Wars is. And you just go from there. So in terms of depth, it's not that deep. So genuinely, I'd give it also like a five because it, yeah, it's not that crazy. And then how fun is it? I'd say it's a 10, man. Maybe a 9 because sometimes it can get frustrating when they give you like crazy teams and then since in the higher ends you can't use links and you end up getting wiped because you made a mistake and you have to reset the entire thing. So I'll give it like a 9 for how fun it is and then I, I think that's fair for like the overall gimmick of this um, thing. And now we talked about Labyrinth. I can't really log into it because the Labyrinth is oh, not Labyrinth. Final Boss. Can't go into it because like Final Boss is already done. I placed 11%. Let's go. But, okay. Final boss, gameplay-wise, it's like a... Like, it's decent. You have your two phases. There's nothing unique about it after that other than, like, the gimmicks of the phases themselves. But genuinely speaking, the gameplay loop is not crazy. So I'd probably give final boss, like... Uh, I think I can give it a 7 out of 10 as well. I think that that is fair. Is it worth doing? 100%. It's a 10 out of 10 for worth. Because if you score high enough, you get gems and outfits for characters. It's always worth it when you get stuff like that. Now, how much of an account investment you need? I'd also say this is around like a 7. Because you don't need the highest amount of um, investment of your account to do it. But you do need a solid investment of your account to do it. You know? And replayability? Uh, maybe like an 8. Because, yes... You want to replay Final Boss as much as possible to get the highest score and then also getting like the coins to buy the stuff from the shop. But it's not really that fun, especially when you can't auto it. So you have to actively make sure that you're doing the right stuff on the right turns in order to do it. So I'll give it like an 8 on replayability. N not even an 8, maybe a 7. Like a 7 fine with me. In depth, okay, so depth of final bosses, are they are pretty deep sometimes, but after you do it the one time, you know what to do for the other 15,000 attempts. So like in, in depth, I'll also give it like a five. Maybe, eh, I'll give it like a six, just because the first initial attempt is always gonna be the most fun when you're learning the mechanics of the final boss. But then after that, once you learn it, you just clear it and it's easy from there. So yeah, that's my take on that one for sure. And then the fun, Eh, it depends on the boss. It really does depend on the boss. So I'm give like a, a 7 for fun. Because depending on who you're going against, it could not be fun. Like straight up. Like Final Boss King in the end, it was pretty fun for a little bit. But it wasn't like crazy. 
But then you got shit like Final Boss, Tarmiel, and Sario. That one's a little bit annoying. So, I wouldn't call that fun in the slightest. Now, talking about our boy Labyrinth. Labyrinth, gameplay-wise, is good. It's a 10 out of 10 for gameplay. It's one of those, like, hero arena-type game modes, and I enjoy it a lot. Especially how randomized and unique it is, comparatively to everything else in the game. It's pretty good. Now, is it worth doing for account? Obviously, yes. It's, it's always going to be worth. Because it's got a lot of good stuff. LR coins sometimes, gems, labyrinth outfits. Again, if they give you gems, they give you outfits, they give you LR coins, it's 100% worth it. 100% of the time. And, and now that I'm thinking about it, okay, never mind. I'm not going to change it. I'm not going to change anything I already fucked with, so it's a 10. I want to change limited time events to like 8 because really you don't need to do it. And it's not completely worth it most of the time, but it is. Whatever. Anyways, back to labyrinth. How much of an account investment you need? Nothing. That's the beauty of Labyrinth, because it does not calculate off of your account box. It is strictly level one characters in Labyrinth that are already pre-made and you just go in. So investment, you don't need any, it's a 10. Replayability of it is also pretty good. Is it a 10? Maybe not. I'll probably give it like an eight because sometimes you can mess up and then you have to reset the entire Labyrinth it, it depends it really does depend and, but they have worked on the quality of life aspect of resetting and stuff like that so that's why it's not really low like a seven so i'll give it an eight for sure the depth of the labyrinth however uh that one's kind of hard because like the labyrinth itself does like it's again it's just like final boss like the first attempt it's always going to be the most fun but then once you actually start replaying it and replaying it and replaying it it falls off so I think I'm gonna give it a six, just like the final boss, because it's literally the ex exact same gimmick. And then in terms of fun, I'd say it's a 10. It's probably the funnest thing that they can do for the game right now, in terms of everything I went through. Like, it's pretty fun. Labyrinth is fun. I will give them that, for sure. And now next up, we have SP Dungeon, Fort Soldiers. Fort, Fort Soldiers? Soldiers? One of the two, I don't know. But when it comes to Fort Soldiers, the gameplay loop of it, it's pretty bland. It's bland as hell. And not even that, you can unironically auto everything here. So, gameplay wise, it's like a four at best. And a four is assuming that you don't have like skip tickets and you just can, you just want to go through it. Because at the end of the day, special dungeon can be cleared by any team, gold can be cleared by any team, the evolve and enhanced stage can also be cleared by any team, and then the battle event can be cleared by any team. The only thing that cannot be cleared by any team are like the limited time dungeon keys the time limit dungeons basically those are a little bit more like nuance but that will come in when we talk about depth i guess but overall the gameplay of this is all the same and i give it a four because it's not that enjoyable in in terms of worth a 10. this is one of those things that you want to add to your daily routine as well just making sure you get your special dungeon keys out of the way as often as possible so you never over cap and you just get your rewards that you deserve so that's gonna be another 10 for that um, aspect of the game and then in terms of your account investment you don't need that much so I'll give it like an eight because the only thing you need to invest in is those time limit dungeons everything else is a fairly easy to beat with any team you want because the teams aren't that strong at all now replayability again you auto everything in SP dungeon so there is no replayability technically but they're like when it comes to like you know doing it over and over and over again you don't get tired of it because you, again you can auto everything so i'd honestly give this a 10 for replayability just because you can skip it <laughs> so depth like again so this is where the, the time limit dungeons come in when it comes to depth because these are the most deepest part of sp dungeon making sure you do your time limits all the time to get your essay coins or anvils or chaos fragments if you're one of those crack babies and then the coin dungeons, which no one really does. It's a waste of time. Even though it's good rewards, it's a waste of time. So I'd say for depth, I'd probably give it like a solid six. Like I think a six is also fair for this one as well. Uh, yeah, maybe not even a six, maybe a five. I think a six might be too high because that's comparing it to Labyrinth and Final Boss and it's not that deep with the whole first come first serve type of deal. I'd give it a five because it, uh, yeah, that that's the only bag that this game mode has. Now, in terms of fun, it's not fun. It never was fun. It'll never be fun. So it just gets a zero straight up. 
and that's strictly because at the end of the day you can auto all of it everything here can be autoed someone just blew their horn <laughs> like literally everything so there is no fun to be had you just have to go in and press a few buttons nothing crazy now patrols this is where the gameplay gets a little bit different but at the end of the day there is no gameplay so for patrols gameplay zero there's nothing happening here you just go in and click a few buttons and then the auto does it for you now is it worth 10 period all the time because not only is this d just giving you resources passively it's also giving you crit damage and crit resistance gear which is pretty hard to come by in like normal means of like equipment stages and shit like that so patrols for worth 100 percent worth it how much account investment you need zero you need nothing so that's gonna be a 10 there replayability there is no replayability but at the same time you don't play anything so it's a 10 because all you have to do is go in and click a few things and that's it yeah, this is literally the back of your mind most people probably even forget that patrols exist sometimes the depth of it there is no depth it's straight up zero there's nothing going on here and is it fun again nothing going on here zero so in terms of patrol yes it's an f rank like thing but it's also really good like don't get it twisted just because it's an f right there because of the way that these are ranked it's not mean it's a bad game mode it or it's not a game mode i guess but it's not a bad feature i put it like that because yeah some of these are features most of these are game modes but some of these are features but we'll get into that when we get there now let's talk about deathmatch deathmatch is one of those game modes that is repetitive as hell so you know it is what it is but at the end of the day death matches are really relevant for your box if you don't do these you won't be able to level up your characters now when it comes to me personally all of my characters are bare minimum already level 80 so when it comes to normal difficulty death matches they're useless to me completely useless now they have no purpose but i do them anyway but I, so I only need to do my hell death matches if I want to really be like consistent in upgrading my characters. But overall, in gameplay, the death matches are pretty fun because it's co-op. You can have like a bunch of different teams you can use, and then again, co-op. I think that's like one of the fun things about games like this are the multiplayer aspects, not PvP per se, more PVE because I like PVE games, Warframe and shit like that are my, like my favorite games of all time. So, like, in gameplay, I give it, like, a solid 9 for gameplay. Like, just because, like, you can do a lot of different shit. You, I know, nowadays, it's only, like, two teams you can run, and you can one turn every phase. But I still run into people that are, like, lower powers than me, just started the game. And I find it fun do, using those random teams just generated by, like, who do I want to play today? Oh, Terry? Oh, Derriere? Oh, shit. Oh, Shin? Like, I like being able to just play different shit, not just using the main team and just going through it. That's just how I play the game, though. I'm trying to find enjoyment in what I do. So, is it worth it? Of course it's worth it. That's how you level up your characters. Like, or awaken your characters, I should say. Now, how much of an account investment you need? You don't need anything. At most, you will need, like, to build them into it a little bit later, but you don't need anything crazy. So, I'm going to give that an 8 for investment, because it's not that deep. Now, in terms of replayability, again, it depends on how you play it. If you're just doing it for the one turn every phase teams, you're probably not going to enjoy replaying it as much as I do. Because at the, like, okay, for example, right? Let me just go over here, right? This is my team for Deathmatch on Hell difficulty. This is nowhere near the meta team. Not even close. Like Red Demon. My Red Demon team. What is that setup? It does, the team doesn't even make sense. Because I'm just fucking around. I'm doing shit. I don't care. And then my... Like, look at this team. Look look at these teams. And then my Belmoth and Original Demons are actual teams. But the other three, they're jokes. You can use whatever you want and you can clear it with relative ease. So I'm going to say for replayability, for me personally... I'd say it's like a nine because I change my teams every like month or so. But for like the majority of players that want to beat it and beat it as fast as possible, they probably don't enjoy replaying this that much. So I'm gonna give it like a seven for replayability, and I'll leave it at that. In terms of depth, there is no depth to it except for like the held versions. But again, it's one of those situations. Once you do it one time, you've done it all the times. So I'd give it like a six for the first attempt and then you learn and then you grow from there now are they fun i'd say they're fun i give it like a seven i'm not gonna lie 
maybe even an eight, but that might be a little too generous. But I'll give it a seven for fun because it's not a horrible game mode. It's just it's just chill for me anyway. So that being said, moving on to this bad boy, the Demon King. Demon King battle is cool. The gameplay is fun in some instances. I'd give it like a seven for gameplay, and that's me being generous. <laughs> Cause like the, at the end of the day, it's just like sometimes it can be tedious. Not gonna lie. And then if you get the wrong ruling and you have to reset, it can be annoying. Now for your bucks, is it worth it? Of course it is. Ten because you get your true awaken coins through this guy, and true awaken gives you a thousand extra CC per character. So keep that in mind. Now how much of an investment of your box you need? You need a pretty strong box to do Demon King on Hell difficulty. Even extreme difficulty, you need a pretty good box. So like you can't do this just hopping into the game and trying it out. You cannot complete this. And also you need like certain characters, very specific teams. So honestly, account investment, you need to have like a, a decent box. So I'm gonna give it like a five for investment since it's very like, it's not whale heavy per se. I can't say it's whale heavy. I'm just saying it's like, you need to be deep into the game in order to do this boss fight. Because even still, you need to be there like episode 600 or so to even unlock Demon King Battle as a content. So yeah, that already entitles that you need to be well invested. So I'm going to give it a 5. Now for replayability, it's bad. I'm going to be honest. It's one of those things I don't like replaying. Because if you mess up once and you just got to reset because the ruling didn't fit your RNG hand, I just don't enjoy that at all. So I'm going to have to give that one like a solid four for replayability. I don't like doing that. I do it once and I'm done for the week. I'm not using my coins to replay it over and over again because I'm I'm not that invested in or nor do I care that much about True Awakening. But like shit, bro, that shit gets annoying when I load in and I get debuff, debuff, heal. And I don't get a heal card with um, King or Shuna, whoever you're using. Or I don't get a debuff with Gother or Albedo, whatever team you're using. It's super annoying. It's that RNG aspect of it. And I just don't, I'm not a fan of RNG type shit. Now, when it comes to depth, I give it like a, eh, eh like a five. I, I give it another five because again, it's an, it, this is, okay, I'll give it like a seven. I'll give it a seven. The reason I'm giving it a seven is because not only is it like the final boss and stuff, you do it one time, you've done it a million times. You also have to like play differently every single time you do it since the rulings are different every single time you do it. So I'm going to give it a seven for depth because it adds a little bit of spice to your life. And then that's about it. Now in terms of fun, eh, I think I'll also give it a seven here as well because that is a little bit of fun when you do it and then like you clutch up from a moment where you thought you would lose or something like that. So I'll give it a seven and then just roll with that. Now. We're talking knighthood here. That requires like everything knighthood related except for Guild Wars. No, I lied. This isn't the right one. I have knighthood later. <laughs> this is knighthood boss battle by itself. I should probably change that. Yeah, let me do knighthood boss. There we go. This is different than the actual knighthood itself. So, knighthood boss battle gameplay, it's pretty decent. It's not hard at all for me personally. And even on my free to play account, it's not that difficult. So I'd probably give it like a six for game, not even a six. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a six, a six for gameplay. I think that's fair. Now, is it worth for your account? 100% because look at all these rewards you can get up here for just doing it one time and getting a good scoring. I could have, I haven't done it again. So I just don't have these last three ones, but that's whatever. I don't care that much, but it's a 10 for worth it. And now for your account investment, you don't need that big of an account. You don't need that much of an like increase of your account to do this and get high scores. You just need certain characters. So I probably give it a seven for investment since it's very character gated, like the other game modes that are like lower in investment, but it's not as bad as the other ones because you can still do them with any team. You just can't get high scores with any team. Now for replayability, I'm giving this a ten, strictly because replaying Hell difficulty is the best way to get brownstones. So I'm gonna give it a ten. Especially since you can auto it and it's not that complicated or hard to auto it. So I'm gonna give it a 10 for sure. And in terms of depth, there is no depth to it anymore. They added a, like one guild boss in the last two years, but every time like they change it, it's the same shit. There is no gimmicks that changes every time they switch up the guild boss. It's the same exact stuff. So for depth, I'm gonna give it like a four 
for like they tried at some point, but then they just stopped adding guild bosses, and now we just get the same shit for the like the last four years. And then last but not least for fun, eh, eh, it's pretty fun. If you're like a high score chaser and you want to get your rewards, it's pretty fun to go through it and try to like strategize to get as many points as possible. I'd say I give it like a an eight for fun. I ain't mad at that. That's it's not a bad game mode. It's not. Now running into creature nest. Okay, so this is where shit gets controversial for me personally. Okay, I do not like demonic beast battle. I never did, and I never will. No matter how many they add or how cool these characters look, I'm not a fan of this game mode. I fucking hate it. But I again, this is unbiased. This is an opinion for like a general consensus of players, not just me myself personally. So when it comes to creature nest. I'd say gameplay wise, it's a it's a 10. Mm, no, it's an eight. I give it an eight because each of the each of them are very, very, very unique. They all have very unique gimmicks. And no matter if you learn them the first attempt and you just go through it the next time, you will always have a challenge to overface being the gimmicks that they bring to the table. Right? So I'm gonna give this an eight for gameplay. And now worth again it's another 10 because this is where you get your holy relics and holy relics are fundamental to this game and like og characters and shit like that now account investment however i'm gonna have to give this a low score because you need a very specific team for every single beast and the later beast like ratatasker are is locked behind newer units so you need to invest in the units and not only are the newer units they're seasonal units so they don't, they're not going to appear on every banner they're going to appear on some banners if you they feel like it so investment wise i'm gonna have to give it like a four because you need very specific teams not only that the cc look at the seat like you need a four mil for this five mil for this seven ten twelve mil like the recommendations for these are insane so i'm gonna have to give this like a four. Oh, now replayability I'm not a fan of it personally, but when I think about it in the general consensus of things, it's probably really easy to replay like Bird, Deer, Skull and Hottie for sure. Needhogger can be a little tricky, and Rattatasker can be a little tricky, but three out of the five of them are pretty easy when it comes to replayability, so I'm going to have to give it like a seven. Well, what, three out of five is like a solid, like, I don't know what the percentage is there. I don't do math like that, but I'm going to give it a seven for that and I'll let them live. Now depth, I think this is the first game mode where they can get a 10 for depth because they genuinely tried to make something challenging and yes, it is challenging, but they tried a little too hard, okay? It's still too gimmicky for my taste, but it is a really, this is a really in-depth game mode for each and every individual that you have to fight. You have to fight all five of these characters very differently and there is really no repeating strategy per the characters themselves. So I'm gonna give it a 10 for depth. And for fun, I give it like a six. Because, for, like, the fun is my scaling. The fun is my only opinionated scaling. Everything else is just my, my general consensus of the game mode. But fun, for me, it's not fun for me. I, I It's not. I hate doing this. I hate it so much that I'm missing relics still. Like 27 out of 37, 13 out of 18, 9 out of 15, 9 out of 14. And I don't even have a fucking squirrel relic because I hate squirrel with a passion. So these things like this, I'm not I don't do them. So I'm gonna have to give it a six. And now we move on to PvP. PvP is very interesting, okay? Because at the end of the day, the day going in. <laughs> but no, like PvP they be trying, bro. Like PvP is the most mandatory game mode in the game, I would say, if you wanna get free gems. But like they need to do more with PvP. It's the same shit all the time, all day, every day. You run against the same five teams. And there's no like uniqueness to it it's just not like we had leaks of them like actually trying to improve on PvP like the weather conditions leak if that would have came out this game would have been so good weather condition leak was so fucking dope and I was so excited when I heard about that but that never dropped like in my opinion it could have had like if the map was nighttime, demons get a 5% basic stat increase. If the map was in the daytime, goddesses and Eskinor get a 5 Like, something crazy like that would have made this game so much more enjoyable for me when it comes to the PvP aspect of things. But they just said, fuck you, 
and we're just gonna drop chaos pvp every month and we're, we they forgot about the 4v4 game mode they came back with the mirror match one time in the last two years so like whatever so for me pvp is not that great i'm in champ 5 already i don't care about getting champ 1 so i don't care about doing pvp like i don't that's why my characters aren't built like that for real for real i'm playing here for like the collection of characters that i like which is the seven daily sins ip that's really what that all comes down to but for me personally bro pvp eh, i'm gonna have to give this like uh like a seven because i i unironically enjoy pve game modes more than pvp especially how dumb and unbalanced the pvp shit actually is uh, you can yell at me all about that shit in the comments but like at the end of the day i don't really care that much i'm gonna be completely honest I'm not a fan of PvP, and if you are a PvP fan, that's all you, bro. You got it. I applaud you for playing PvP and running against, against the same seven teams. Hey, bro, you do you. But I like it. I like diversity. I want to play with fucking Beatrice, but I can't do that because she's not meta. I want to play with fucking Roxy, but I can't do that because she's not meta. I want to play with fucking OG Meliodas, but I can't do that because he sucks and power creep is a beautiful thing. Like, I can't do what I want to do in PvP, so I don't care. Now, is PvP worth it for your account, however? 100%. Gems, baby. That's all PvP is, except for our gear is a different story. But I don't play gear, so I don't care. But, <laughs> but like, gear is still, it's still not even worth it. But it's a 10 out of 10 for worth because obviously... Now, account investment for PvP, once you get to like the high end of PvP, because bare minimum you want to be master difficulty. To get to master difficulty, you got to work for it. But most active players are already in champ difficulty PvP, and you want to have your box built as much as possible to go first, and you want to have it built as much as possible to win. So, in terms of account investment, a lot. Of account investment especially in ungeared since you can't build them off a of gear alone so you need to have your account CC high if you want to go first so I'm giving it a zero for investment just because it is severely one-sided on who goes first and all that good stuff now in terms of replayability of PvP it might not be the funnest game mode ever but you, there is a lot of replayability in PvP, obviously, because it's like the most mandatory game in mode in the game itself. So I'd probably give it a, a 10, because sometimes if you sit there and play like 10, 20 matches, there is a little bit of enjoyment there for me. But uh, at the end of the day, they going in, you know what I mean? So yeah, it is what it is. For PvP depth, none. There is no depth. You play the meta team, you win. That's it. There is no depth to PvP. And even if you try to have fun, you're getting one shot. It, it is what it is. And then for fun, yeah, at the end of the day, I'm going to give it a 7 for fun as well. Because it's genuinely just not that crazy. It's just not, bro. Like, yeah. PvP F tier game mode to me. That makes so much sense. Like, I'm not a fan of PvP. So I that checks out completely. Now... Brawl, on the other hand, it's it's even worse, bro. Brawl needs to get something. Brawl needs help, dude. I don't know what they're doing with this game mode, but holy shit, it needs help. I'm in the top 50k, and I don't even touch Brawl. So, like, for that to be like that is crazy work to me. But, yeah, we can talk about it real quick. Why not? Gameplay-wise, zero. You don't play it. It's all auto. It's a cool concept, but it's all auto. So, I... If this was like a actual PvP game mode where you can play as the three teams you choose, this would be a dope game mode. But it's completely auto and you can skip all of it. There's nothing here. Worth it for your account? Not really. There's some decent rewards here, but the rewards are so minuscule to me personally that I could care less about it. Like, you get the victory stuff, you get some good stuff here. Like, you can see, these are all really good materials. But I don't care to do this. I just don't. It is what it is, bro. So I'm gonna say, like, account worth? This is gonna be like the first one that's not a 10. I'm gonna have to give it like an eight because there's just nothing here for me that inquires me to wanna play this. The only thing that I like liked about it when I did play it was like the, the brawl shop. But even then, like, I already have what I want here, bro. I like the popular stuff. Like, how do I set it? Like, I don't have this yet, which is whatever. 
but I don't care. I could get these gems here too, but I don't care. I just don't. Like, it's whatever to me. It's probably good for somebody else, but I don't care. I, I just can't. Now, how much account investment you need for this? Again, it's, it's a PvP game mode. You want to have as much investment as possible. You don't need that, per se, but the more you have, the better. So, unlike PvP, where it's zero, because you deadass need a high box CC if you want to go first, on this side of the field, I give it like a four, because your account doesn't need to be that crazy. You can just score high or get three good teams and just go from there. You don't need to be insane. You want to go first? Yeah, but you don't need to be as insane as actual PvP because you're not playing players, you're playing bots. Another replayability, that's zero because again, you're not playing the game. The depth of it, they had an idea, they kind of fumbled it, I'll give it a four. And then for fun, I mean, when you do do it, there is some fun to be had in Brawl. If you have like three teams and you're just watching to see how your teams play out, sometimes it can be fun. So I'll give it like a five, but that's as much as I can do for that, bruh. Still an F tier game mode at the end of the day. It just is. Now, <sighs> when it comes to training grotto, training dungeon, I haven't done it yet, which is crazy. But like training dungeon, they just updated it so you can auto clear everything for free or not free for auto tickets. You know, you can do all of it. So gameplay is now officially off the table. But for me personally, I can still have to do it because if I auto it without five starring the other ones, I only get one level one rewards and not level four. So gameplay wise, like a three, like a like a three, like it was a good idea. But now they made it so you can just skip through it completely. So I'll give it a three. Now, if they never added this bulk clear thing and you actually have to do the amber illusions and fight your own teams, because I do like that gimmick, I would have given it like a five or six. But since that's taken out of the game completely now with the bolt clear, three. Now is it worth it for your account? Of course it is. You get anvils, you get hammers, and you get UR engraving stones. The, again, more good stuff you need to build your character box. Now, how much account investment you need? You don't need anything. That's the good thing about this, because you can clear these based off of your own preferences and not the preferences that the game sets for you. So for investment, you don't need that much. You can go in day one and do this level one and shit like that. Maybe not day one, but <laughs> maybe that was a little bit excessive. But you can go in relatively low, like starting the game, and you'll be fine doing level one and getting materials through that. You'll be fine. So I'm giving it a 10 for investment. Replayability, I do find this game mode enjoyable when it wasn't just bulk clear. So I, I'd probably give it an eight before, but now that you can clear it, I'd probably give it like a six. Like, I think that's fair. In depth of this game mode, again, it was a cool concept, but they never iterated on this at all. They never changed it. They never, like, it's the same shit since day one of Training Grotto being a thing. So I'll give it like a, a four, just like Brawl, because they haven't changed anything about it other than just making it easier to clear. And then the fun aspect, I'd say a five, because the fun thing about this for me was that I would go in with these random match generated teams and then just fight myself, which sounds stupid on paper, but it gave this game mode something to do for me personally. I unironically gave this game mode life for myself. So I'll give it a five. Otherwise it would be like a zero because there is no fun to this. It's just rinse, watch, repeat. Now let's talk about World Tree. World Tree is interesting in some way or another. So World Tree, gameplay wise, it's pretty tough. Like going in as a low box is pretty tough. But after you do it again, you could just auto clear everything and you will be fine. So it's a first time clear and then you just AFK it the rest of the way. So when it comes to gameplay, I'll give it like a four because it, it maybe a five. I'll give it a five for gameplay because the first time completion is difficult for like the last stage of all of these shards, Earth, Heaven, and Nether. The last stage is pretty fucking hard. And I still haven't beat the last stage of Nether on my free to play account, even though my free to play account is like nine mil CC. So I give it a five, just to be fair. Now worth it, I'm not gonna lie. It's not that worth because the shop itself is decent, but the amount of times that I play, the, the amount of time I put into this game 
and I just don't do this and then I just skip these for like weeks at a time it's kind of crazy so I can't say I'm even I'm missing out sure but I haven't even noticed that I missed out on content until like wait I forgot this existed type of deal so I'm gonna give it like a a seven for worth because genuine maybe not even a seven maybe I'll give it an eight because it's still worth it at the end of the day I just be forgetting and once you forget for one week you forget for two then you forget for three and then it just you don't do it it's crazy like i forgot this is the thing that's why it's at zero right now in like nine hours and 55 minutes i literally just did this today because i forgot this was a thing now in terms of account investment you need a pretty good box to beat the last stage of nether and nether is the newest one so i'm gonna have to say you need like, like i'm gonna give it a six for investment you need a pretty good team and a pretty high cc now replayability again once you beat it once you auto it so there is no replayability you just you skip tickets so i'm giving it a zero there and for depth there is no depth there is no gimmicks to these floors they're just really really tanky enemies there is nothing special about it so i'm gonna give it a zero for depth and the fun aspect of it also there's nothing fun about it you do it the one time and you auto clear it so i'm giving that a zero as well now let's talk about the equipment stage equipment stage is the most useless thing of all time after you get to like the point of the game that i'm in but early on in the game equipment stage is pretty useful so let's talk about it gameplay wise it's not crazy because again you can auto clear it after you beat it the first time so i'm also going to give this like a five for gameplay like genuinely it's not crazy and then for a box worth it's got to be it gets it gets you more useless and more useless the longer you go into the game it's like starting off day one it's a 10 but once you get like to five mil cc it becomes an eight once you get to seven mil it becomes like a four and then once you get to like 10 mil you will never do this again because you get all your your, your characters are already built you have equipment on all of them and you have enough equipment in the backlog to just set gear for whoever you want so like over time it gets lower so as it stands right now in the game though i feel like most people are just done with equipment stage farming for the like 90 percent majority of players so i'm gonna give it like a seven and just roll with it now when it comes to investment of your box you don't need investment it's pretty easy even the highest difficulty of it it's really straightforward and you can beat it with literally like level 10 units if you really wanted to so i'm gonna give it a 10 for investment replayability you auto it there is no replayability but if you can't auto it like with tickets you can auto it with your team which is a lot longer but it is there so i'm gonna give it a six for replayability and go with that and then for depth there's no depth to it it's just random fodder units you fight nothing creative about it at all and then for fun also nothing fun about it because you just auto it there's nothing there it's just not it there's nothing so now we get to like the actual most useless feature in the entire game right now reverse stage these this is a cool concept really good i still need to complete my reverse stage three and four season or season three and special but it's a real cool concept they just haven't done shit with it bro it hasn't been updated in two years nothing has come out of this and then once you complete it the one time you get all your rewards and your stars you're done you will never look at this again so like i still need to do it myself but that, i'll do it on my own pace because i don't care that much for this game mode but for gameplay what they had here it was so good like it's just this main story but in reverse you're playing from the enemy's perspective it's such a good concept they just haven't finished the story like we're only like they they just didn't finish the story it's that simple so for gameplay i'm gonna give it like a five because, uh, maybe even a seven or i mean a six because it was a good idea they just haven't touched the damn thing now is it worth for your box i mean yeah you get good rewards here like you get gems you get ssr tickets and like that's it that that's it you get gems and ssr tickets but that's pretty good because gems will get you ssr characters ssr tickets do the same thing so i'm gonna give it like uh a 10 for worth because it's it's a one-time deal right you do it once and you never got to look at it again so it's definitely worth your time especially if you have these villain characters built and then for how much account investment you need you need you need the villain characters built which that's let's be real 
most villains in the early stages of Seven Deadly Sins in the Grand Cross universe are not that good in the game. So you're wasting materials building them. Like people like the Weird Fangs, um, OG Jericho and Gila, um, the Commandments. Like you're wasting them. You're wasting a lot of materials building these characters that you need for Reverse Stage. But it's it, it's something. So investment. I'm gonna give it like a seven. Cause you don't need to have them highly invested you just need like probably a ur piece on them and they'll have enough cc to go first and you can just go from there except for season three season three is kind of fucked we may go talk about that that ain't my job now for replayability there is none you do it once you never look at it again so that's gonna be a zero for that depth again this was a good game mode they had something here but they just stopped it doing it so i'm gonna give it a seven for depth because that's actually a unique idea playing as the enemy going through the story in a different sort of manner that's cool in my opinion and then for fun i'm gonna also give it like a seven like it's not bad it's not they just kind of gave up bro it's crazy now then let's talk about the main story of seven deadly sins in the game gameplay wise it's pretty good i'm gonna give it like a seven not even a seven i'll give it an eight because i do like the storyline in grand cross even though it's just the story but i'll explain that later once I get done talking about it. But, like, the story itself, gameplay-wise, yeah, it's an 8. Now, is it worth your time? Of course it is. You get a lot of free gems, a lot of good materials. And early on, you get a free SSR DN. <laughs> uh, free SSRs. Remember the days. But anyways, yeah, it's definitely worth your time. It's easy. It's doable. Sometimes. And uh, it's fun. Sometimes. And so, for your, how much account investment do you need, right? Now that you're in the later, like, again, it's one of those things just like, um, uh, roll tree and equipment stages and, like, creature nest, you need a lot of investment to actually get through the story. But the story is paced in a way where, okay, Hawk, you need to be quiet. <laughs> the story is paced in a way where the enemies get stronger and stronger every episode. And you, by proxy should be getting as strong as the enemies if not stronger than the enemies in every episode that's how the game is structured when it comes to the storylines so in reality your team should always be if not like a little weaker a little stronger than the actual boss itself for the story so i'm not gonna penalize it too much for how much investment you need in your account because it walks with you in terms of like building your uh, your box so I'm going to have to give it like a 7 for investment or maybe even a 6 because it does get kind of crazy after like the Demon King shows up. It gets a little wild. So I'm going to give it like a 6. Replayability though, 0. You don't replay the story. You, you can, but you shouldn't because you don't get rewards for it, you know? So we're not even going to talk about that. And then the depth, it's the story of Grand Cross. I love the story of Grand Cross. The depth of it is a 10. The animation in the game is better than the anime any day of the week. So, I'm going to give it a 10 for depth, which is, it's been a while since I gave something a 10. So, yeah, I'm going to take that one and run with it. And for fun, I'm going to give it like an 8. Like, it's a, it's fun. You're walking through the storyline again, and you have to use certain characters to be certain characters. I enjoy that type of content, and I enjoy the storyline of Sam Daily Sins. I'm going to give it a 10. It's that easy. Now, when we talk about the Ragnarok story, however, oh boy. Ragnarok story is a joke, bro. They, they, it's cool. I see where they're going with it for now. I've done all the um, chapters, I know, up there, you can see, I haven't done all the chapters, but I've done them on my free-to-play account, okay? Relax. Because I'm still planning on making a chapter 8 cutscenes video, that's why I haven't touched chapter 8 yet, on my main account. But, overall, the storyline gameplay is the exact same as main story, I'm gonna give it an 8 for that. The, is it worth it, it's the exact same as main story, so yes, it's worth it. The investment, you don't need that much investment for the Ragnarok storyline as much as you need for the main storyline. So I'm going to give it like an 8. As long as you have the Ragnarok characters built, which apparently we're just getting Ragnarok characters left and fucking right. You should be fine. Because again, we're getting a new Shin after the slime collab. I don't know if y'all heard that, but I heard that leak somewhere in the Twitter sphere, sphere that we're getting Shin for the next character after collab, so... Yay! But um, replayability, also zero. It's a story. Depth. The story of Ragnarok is interesting, but it's not captivating. So I'm going to give it like an eight for depth. 
because I'm still trying to figure out what they want to do with that. In terms of fun, though, it is pretty fun, but I'll also give it an 8 as well. So we'll see how that turns out once we're getting more into the story of Seven Deadly Sins and see what they do there. Now, the catastrophe story. Oh, brother. That's just a cash and grab, bro. I hate it with a passion. But again, we're just going to run through that shit, all right? Gameplay is the same story. It's an 8. Is it worth doing? Of course it is. You get 30 gems at the end of the chapter. Now, how much investment you need? You don't need that much investment. I think you need less investment than Ragnarok, so I'm going to give it just a 10. Because I don't think you need that much investment to do it. Because I think most of the fights in the Catastrophe story are like event fights. So they give you the character that you need to do the, that fight. Replayability, that's a no for me. Because there's nothing to replay. Depth, the story is less interesting than Ragnarok, that's for sure. So I'm going to have to give it like a 5. Because I am not. I don't care about the Catastrophe storyline at all. And then for fun, eh, a 7. It's not as fun as the other two, that's for sure. So I'll give it like a 7. Because you're just facing a bunch of characters that you've never seen in your life. Like, straight up. Now we're here at the actual knighthood itself. This little content slice of life shit. Knighthood gameplay wise, it has knighthood boss battles. It has guild wars. That's about it, right? But knighthood as a whole, eh, it's, it's good, bro. It's good. I'll give it like an 8. Maybe even an... I'll give it a 9. I think a 9 is fair. It's almost perfect. I just have my own gripes about it. Now, is it worth being in a knighthood? 100%. 100%. Unless you're in mine. My knighthood fucking sucks. By the way, if you need a knighthood and you want a fun one, bro, just pull up in King XDN. My knighthood is offering spaces. We have five slots left. And we need help. Bad. Like, really bad. But, um, yeah. So, how much investment do you need on your account? You don't need that much. My, or at least, most guilds are casual. But if you want to play, like, Guild Wars and shit, it goes crazy. So, I'm going to just give it, like, a 8. For investment because you don't need that much you just need to be able to you know beat knighthood boss and participate in guild war if your guild is doing that type of stuff my phone just run that was not ideal so yeah replayability of knighthood stuff it's pretty good i'll give it like a seven they got stuff to do in knighthood all the time with the knighthood tasks and the knighthood orders you always have something to do for your knighthood so i'd, I'd give it something for that for sure and the depth of the knighthood, I'll give, also give it a 7 there as well. It's nothing extreme, it's just a decent at best. And knighthood fun, I'd say being in a knighthood is pretty fun. I'm going to give it a 10. Knighthoods are cool if your knighthood does what they need to do. Because like I love interacting with my clan mates and shit like that. But if we're not doing our things, being checking in every day, then it gets a little bit annoying. But overall, being in a knighthood is beautiful. I love everyone in my knighthood. It's great. I love that shit. But, um, yeah. That's that. We can talk about Guild Wars now. <laughs> because I don't know shit about Guild Wars. So I can't say for sure that my opinion on Guild Wars is accurate. But I can say, like, you know, maybe there's something here for me. Okay? So Guild Wars as a game, it's probably the best game mode in the game for PvP purposes. Because I love the 4v4 format. And it's actually, like, enjoyable and competitive at the same time instead of pvp where you only face the same seven teams it's the same of guild war don't get me wrong it's the exact same gimmick but it's 4v4 and not 3v3 so i put guild war over pvp any day now is it worth doing it of course it is especially if you can if you have access to it you get free cosmetics if you're in the top 10 guild in guild war something like that so it's always a plus now account investment however really fucking high you, you need to be the best of the best to even compete in Guild War. So, that's a zero for account investment. Because you need to be the best of the best. Top 0-1% minimum. And then replayability. It's a 10. Because, obviously, if people didn't like Guild Wars, they wouldn't do it. But it's the same guilds every week in Guild War. So, it's got to be up there. In, like, replayability. Now, depth of Guild War. It's, it's just Hero Arena but in a pvp format so i'm gonna have to give it the same as hero arena which is a five so i'm gonna give it a five maybe even i'll give it a six because there's actual people you're going against which i think i'm wrong about that i'm pretty sure you're still going against people's defensive bots i don't know i'll have to get back to you on that i'm pretty sure you go against defensive bots actually so i'm gonna make that a five i'm gonna make it just like hero arena and then last but not least the fun category it's gotta be fun bro it has to be it's guild wars and it's probably the best content in the game. So I'm going to give it a 10 for that. And I'll just roll with it. Okay? Okay. 
Now, we're officially out of the major content grabs of the game. Now we're into the nitty gritty. We're like After this, we're gonna be talking about the heroes in the game, the summoning feature, the coin shop, and then the last things I wanna talk about is the pay to win value and the free to play value of this game. And that I'll wrap up the video there. So, we're gonna be talking about this one a little bit, for sure, for sure. And I imagine this is where most people will skip to in the video itself. So, let's see what happens here, let's see what happens. So, heroes. The gameplay of heroes, 10 out of 10. The heroes animations are peak. The heroes kits are amazing. They all have like dope outfits. Everything about the units in this game is pretty fucking good. Like these characters look so good. Like Escanor looks amazing. Glass, the fucking shield hero chick looks cool. Fitoria looks cool. I can't think of a single character in the game that doesn't look cool. Holy War Melly, bro dope as fuck like every single character whoever i click on they all look cool og Millum, cool character um we just go to this nigga even fat king bro he looks dope because they actually made him look good in the game his animations are good so gameplay wise for the characters 10. now is it worth summoning on every character nowadays no i give it like a seven like it's not worth summoning on every character probably like every two to three characters is worth summoning on but it's not that crazy you know because some characters come back in different banners it is what it is now how much account investment you need for the characters we're going to change that meaning to like how deep do you need to get into your bag in order to invest in your characters and it's pretty fucking deep i have every character level 80 minimum they all have gear and i'm at 13 mil i'm not even close to the top one percent of players so in genuality, it's pretty fucking deep. But it's not a bad thing. And that's the thing about building characters. It's never a bad thing to build your box, okay? So I'm gonna give this a 10. It's gonna sound hypocritical of me, even, but it's never a bad thing to build out a character. If you accidentally level up fucking Jericho to level 85 instead of 80, that's a plus, bro. You just added like a thousand plus combat class to your box. You That's never a bad thing. So I'm gonna give it a 10 and just leave it at that, all right? And it comes to replayability for every character. Let's be real, it's not that high, okay? Cause I'm a, again, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna change replayability for characters into how many characters are actually useful out of the 300 plus characters in the game. And out of the 300 characters in the game, barely, barely 50, barely, not even actually, probably like 40 characters are actually useful in the game. So. I'm gonna give it like, like on that scale, like 40 out of 300, that's a solid like 20% of characters. So I'm gonna give it like a two. I'll, get, I'll give it a three for just to even it out, you know? Cause otherwise it just, you know, wouldn't be, wouldn't be right, wouldn't be right. Now the depth, 10. Okay, that might be a lie. Maybe a nine for depth because some of these characters' kits are kind of stupid, but in like, yeah. I can't say that's like a current thing for the newest characters to drop. All the new characters that drop, they all sound really promising. Like the Halloween Asterosa, Percival, the collab characters. They all have a pretty good kit. So I can't say that. But at the end of the day, half of these characters are unusable. So I'm going to give it a 9 for depth. And then for fun, it's a 10. It's always fun when you get a new unit and you get to try them out for like the first time. So I'm going to give it a 10 for the units because the units are actually pretty cool. I'm, I can't take that away from this game. This game is really good with making characters. They're just good at managing the content that this game has. That's pretty much what this all comes down to, apparently. Now, we're getting into the summoning bag. I'm not going to summon on him anymore because collab's coming and I want to have enough gems to get all the collab characters. That being said, though, summoning in a quote-unquote gameplay sense, it's, uh, I'll give it an 8. Because nowadays they keep they they were adding animations. The last animation they added was the Escanor animation when God Meliodas came out. But now it's a read. You you know exactly what you're gonna get every time you press that button. So I'm gonna give it an eight for gameplay of summonings. It's still fun, so that's why it's high. But you know it's predictable now. It's very predictable. Now is it worth? That's a fifty-fifty. And just when me saying that, I'm gonna give it a five. 
because it's not worth it summoning on every character but it is worth it summoning on the characters that sound crazy if that makes any sense so it's a 50 50 chance if that character is worth or not like this halloween esterosa for example he's really fucking strong i would love to get him i put 450 gems into this banner but i can't because the slime collab has even stronger characters so i'm gonna skip him and get the slime characters instead see what i mean like it's a 50 50 if you want to summon on these characters or not so i'm giving it a five and it just makes sense that way now is it um like how much account investment you need we're going to change that up to being is it worth investing on all the banners and i'm gonna say no if you're free to play but i'm gonna give it an eight because to be fair even though the game is in like a weird predicament right now they have not missed yet when it comes to a character every character that came out this year except for camilla and shin have been pretty good like shit even the blue shin is decent and the camilla is good camilla is good what am i talking about camilla's crap she's the replacement for nanashi in a way so i'm gonna give it an eight for investment because it's pretty fun like right now being being a grand cosplayer is fun if, regardless of what people are saying about the game these new characters that they drop they're actually putting a lot of thought and like detail into these characters to make them usable and summonable because i have yet to hear a hard skip character this year maybe jenna was the only and red jenna and red chandler are the only two characters i can think of this year that were a hard skip because even shin how quote-unquote bad his kid sounded he was not a skip he was actually pretty strong a 10 percent attack rate stat for all humans is pretty fucking good so if you put him on an Escanor team, Escanor is just going to be that much stronger. Escanor, Arthur, Shin, crazy. So I'm going to give it an 8. And then for replayability, it's a 10, obviously, because people are always tempted to summon on every single banner. So they're going to replay the banner. Like, putting this into quotations, they're going to replay the banner, they're going to resummon on every banner that drops, and they're going to keep trying to get the new character. So, duh. Replayability, 10. Now, depth... I'm gonna also give it like a I'm gonna give it a nine for depth because again a lot of characters have not missed but there are some characters that have missed I guess with that logic I'll give it an eight because there's two characters that missed make it make sense and then fun of course it's fun summoning for the new character it'll always be fun testing your luck seeing if you can beat that three percent rate and then that 0.5 percent rate depending if it's a best character or not but it's always gonna be fun summoning at the end of the day it'll always be like that now let's talk about something minute the coin shop uh, the coin shop is very 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 weird but let's talk about it okay this is what we're gonna do gameplay the coin shop i'm gonna be honest it's not that useful because a lot of coins here are used other places like with me i have most of my characters 6 6 that's why i have 65 coins because if i click on it every character here is maxed out there are no coins or except for these ones i'll put them on later but most of my coins have not been used because the character is 6 6 so when you're building up your box the coin shop becomes more useful because then you have a lot of freeze coins you can just throw at stuff but until you get to that point you you don't want to look at the coin shop other than stamina pots and pvp points and then the um brown stones that's it so for like gameplay I'm going to give it like a 2 because the coin shop just ain't that crazy. Now, is it worth? Yeah, I give it like an 8 for worth. It's pretty worth it. But again, you have to like get to that point where it becomes worth it. Because if you're using your coins early on in your game and you're just wasting your coins buying stuff like this, your box is never going to get crazy. Because a lot of CC comes from duplicating your characters. I'm just saying. And now, when it comes to investment, again... If this comes way later in the stage of your life so I'm gonna give it like a four I'm gonna give it a four in the replay value which I will translate to how often you want to buy stuff like the every day or every week you want to buy the, the stones every day you want to buy um, your use your friendship coins to buy stamina pots you want to make sure you like always stack up on these so I'm gonna give it like a solid seven I think that's fair and then the depth of the 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 coin shop itself is not that deep it's not because again a lot of the stuff you don't want to waste your coins on so i'm gonna have to give it like a four yeah i think nah four is inconsiderate i'll give it a six because like half of the stuff is pretty good you just don't want to waste your coins too early on the stuff 
And then for fun, we're gonna just translate that over to like, I don't know. How would I describe fun in buying a coin shop, right? It really isn't much you can say about it other than it'll be worth it eventually when you have a hundred thousand fucking coins. So I'll give it like a six again. Because they got to the build up to it. Like the earliest part of your game though, it's not going to be fun looking at this. And then you're going to be wasting your coins. And you're going to like, oh my god, my characters aren't 6-6. Six, six. What did I do? You wasted it here. You probably pulled a lot of characters. And then you ended up buying these um, Super Awakening coins because you needed it or something crazy. So yeah, I'm going to give it a 6. And now for the last part of the video, or second to last, we're going to talk about pay to win value and free to play value. We're going to start with pay to win first. Pay to win gameplay wise, like so this is pretty much biggest box ever versus like, you know, boxes that are keeping up with pay to wins, if not like doing a little worse. But pay to win value, gameplay wise, oh shit, didn't mean to do that. It's a 10. It's a one flat out 10. If you put money into this game, you're gonna have a good time. It's just that simple. But because uh, that's the nature of gotcha games. The more money you put, the more addicted you get to the game, the more you want to play the game, the more you want to dominate in the game, and it just domino effects from there. You always want, if you put money in the game, you will always have a good time. Unless you're just like hypocritical, not hypocritical, a narcissist. That's what I meant. Or a masochist. One of those motherfucking words. I don't know. But pay to win value, 10 out of 10. If you put money into the game, it's a 10 out of 10 game. Why is this? Okay. I don't know why that wasn't centered. Okay. I don't know why that's not centered. I think I, whatever. Anyways. Um, is it worth putting money into the game? Not really. You can do a lot of stuff as a free to play. Putting like you can get almost every character free to play, but you cannot get every character six six as free to play. So I'm gonna say a uh, six. It's like a six for if it's worth being a free to play for this or not. I think that is very fair, and we can just leave it at that. Let me boom. There we go. I fixed it. Now in terms of um account investment. Um, obviously you want to if you're putting money into the game you're investing a lot of more resources than you need to make this game playable for you so it's gonna get a zero for investment obvious but as a the value of I guess it can get a zero yeah right because it's all about value right if you put a lot of money into your game your box is gonna skyrocket so investment wise it's pretty fucking high Never mind, it's still a zero. What am I talking about? <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm contradicting myself again. I keep forgetting. I'm, yeah. If it's high investment, it's low on scoring. So, yeah. Replayability of a, of like pay to win value. We're gonna skip that over to like how often would you play as a pay to win? You play every day. You play every day. So I'm giving that a ten. You will not skip a day. You will not skip leg day. You will just be in the fucking lab cooking every single day. Now when it comes to depth of a, uh, the value of it, it's pretty bad. It's pretty deep, it's pretty deep. Because as pay to win, you can be in the best guilds, you can participate in guild awards, you can get the guild work outfits, you can be in the highest rank of PVP, you can clear demonic beast, not demonic beast, creature nest a lot faster. You can do final bosses, get higher scores than other people. You can get higher scores than other people in the labyrinth. You can do all types of shit when it comes to the pay to wins. You can just be at the top of the leaderboard just for putting 50 more dollars than the other guy. And that'll bump you up from like the top 10% to top six. It is that is. So for depth, I'm gonna give it a solid 10 as well because it's really deep, it's really deep. And then fun, I wouldn't say being a pay to win is fun because I used to be pay to win. I stopped being pay to win once Gother came out, like you are Gother, that's the last time I put money into the game. But as a pay to win bro i enjoyed this game way more than i do now as a free to play that's for sure so i'm gonna give it like a solid 10 for pay to win or not even a 10 because there is some stuff that's gimmicky or grimy so i'll give it a nine and roll with that and now for the last page free to play value boys this is what y'all came here to um, for me to talk about unbiased opinion on the free to play life of grand cross okay <sighs> gameplay wise of a free to play six Cause there's there's some stuff you just struggle with regardless if you're free to play or not like if you're free to play you're gonna struggle with it regardless is what i mean to say the only way you're not gonna do that is if you're a high-end free to play which like i just became free to play right i'm at 13 mil 
I know at least two or three other free-to-play players that have a higher box CC to me because they're way more dedicated to the game than I am as a free-to-play. So, genuinely speaking, I'm going to give it a 6 for gameplay because it's a struggle bus being free-to-play, bro. Trust. Now, is it worth being a free-to-play? Of course. Of course it is. You save money being a free-to-play. Of course it's worth. The hell? Now, account investment, however, I'm going to give it a 10 for account investment. And the reason why I'm giving it the opposite of pay to win, right? Pay to win requires money to get to where you want to go. That's not worth investing, bro. In a mobile game or, or a PC client game, it's not worth investing. But if you can get to the levels of a pay to win as a free to play, your worries are out the window. You're chilling, bro. You're in a good Nirvana mind space. I'm giving it a 10. And then on top of that, you have to put way more hours into the game to get to where those pay to win people are as a free to play. So it just makes sense. And that also falls into replayability because that also would get a 10. Because that means you're on a game not only every day, you're on a game like every other hour of every day. You're making sure you don't overcap on your stuff. You're making sure your characters are built up nicely. You're making sure you're saving your gems for the right characters. You're playing the game smart. And so how deep does a free to play bag go, however? It's not a 10 like pay to wins because pay to wins can summon on every banner. Free to plays don't get that, that, um, that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That nuance, I guess. You have to pick and choose. So I'm going to say for the, the, the depth of a free to play, bro, it's got to be like a six. Because you have to make your choices wisely. Otherwise, you're going to mess up like I did. Because I'm going, I have 100 gems going into the collab when I could have had 550 and I could have did a rotation on the collab banner like you see how that makes sense like I wasted 450 gems here for a character I don't even have that was the bad decision you don't want to be like that you don't want to do that because I was gonna keep summoning on that banner but then they announced the collapse so that's why I stopped because I was gonna get Esterosa regardless of who they came out with next but it's a collab so you cannot miss out on those limited characters and then last but not least as a free-to-play is it fun now that really depends on the person you're asking but for me personally i'm gonna say as a free-to-play it's not that fun as it was as a pay to win because i'm not putting as much time into the game but it's the same gimmick overall so i'm gonna give it an eight for fun in my opinion and we're just gonna let that rock okay i think that is very fair and it's very valid and now with that being said we are done okay we are completely finished with our um, tab here, everything has been ordered as follows. And now, let me see, can I sort? No. So we graded everything. And so the last part of this video, I'm gonna like go through all the grades, the letter grades that the chart gave me as to like an opinionated and I'll see if it's true or not in my actual opinion. And then we'll just go from there. So overall, I'm calling this game unbiased as I am in this video because I swear I could have just said oh this is great this is great this is great because I do love the game but I see the flaws I'm not blind I'm not stupid I see what's wrong with the game even though I play the game every day I still love it I'd say it's my favorite gacha game of all time but that doesn't mean it's the best gacha game of all time you know what I mean so overall the game itself is a D tier game and honestly truthfully speaking I can see that I can 100% see this being a D tier game because the devs don't care. That's been a running joke for years now. The devs do not care about this game. They're just throwing out OC characters left and right and it's just ruining the game. There were more OC characters in the game than 7 Daily Sins characters. Make that make sense, bruh. So as limited time events, as an F tier, that makes sense to me. Yep, that makes sense. I don't like them. That makes perfect sense. Daily routine being a C plus, yeah, that also makes sense. I follow that completely. Hero Arena being a B tier game mode, that also makes sense. Final Boss being a C tier, that makes sense. Labyrinth being an A minus, yeah, I do like Labyrinth a lot, so that makes a lot of sense. Special Dungeon being a D tier, that makes sense because you don't play anything, you don't do anything in Special Dungeon, except for the you know other stuff. Patrol being an F is a little bit, I don't, I don't, I don't like the way that one worked out for me, because. I don't, it's not like I don't like patrol. I don't have anything against patrol. It's just there's nothing there because it's automatic. So I wouldn't give it an F personally, but it is what it is. According to my chart, 
I gave it an F, so apparently I'm going to give it an F. Deathmatch being C+, plus makes sense. Demon King being a D tier, yeah, makes sense. Knighthood being a C, Creatureness being a C, both make sense. PvP and Brawl being an F tier makes so much sense, bro. That shit's lame. It is. Training Grotto being a D makes sense. World Tree and Equipment being an F makes sense. Reverse Stage, D tier makes sense. All the or so main story Ragnarok being a C and the catastrophe being a D makes a lot of sense. Knighthood as a gimmick being a B tier thing, yeah, I do like it a lot. Knighthoods are cool. Guild War being a C makes sense. The function of heroes as a whole being B minus makes sense. Summonings being B minus as well makes sense. Coin shopping in F tier makes way too much sense. And then the value of a free to play is a B tier, like it's a B tier thing going into it, and the value of a pay to win is a C tier. Maybe I would flip those two around personally, but it does make a lot of sense because you're you're getting way more for your buck as a free to play than a pay to win, especially if you put a lot of effort into your account. So overall, this is my tier list. Or tier list is crazy work, but I'm so used to doing tier list. This is the first time doing something like this, but this is my overall unbiased opinion on every aspect of grand cross and i stand by it so if you want to argue a different point in the comments i am willing to hear everybody out and if i agree with you to a point i will update this tier list fuck i keep saying tier list i will update this chart and we can go from there but until then this is my video grand cross is a d tier game i still love it to death because i love the seven daily sins ip and we're just gonna go from there so that out of the way i will see y'all in the next video which will probably be the collab um i don't i don't know if i'm gonna make a summon video on it but we'll see but yeah i'll see y'all in the next video bro be sure to like subscribe and i'm out peace and have a wonderful day